Lucy. Lucy. Yes, that's you. Okay, so uh, I'm bored again. Same as usual. Uh, but the reason uh, I'm making this is because I really like talking about my animals. I'm gonna talk about my animals again, by the way. Uh, that's pretty handy information. Uh, I know nobody watches this, and that's really not the point. The point is just for me to um, remember everyone and remember what I did. Maybe if I make mistakes, somebody points it out, I can avoid it in the future, that type of stuff. Uh, I always do a lot of research when getting new animals, so I know uh, what the best care is that I can give them. But you know, everyone can still make mistakes, and maybe someone's like, hey, what you're doing is not right. Please tell me, I really want to do the best, and even though I do a lot of research, not everything you find online is true. Which is why I also get a lot of research from people who actually keep these animals. Especially with the Dikus, because these guys are really, really sensitive to diabetes. Which is really handy information, because if you give them just um, food for rodents, like rodent mix, they all probably die, because they're really high on sugar, uh, those types of foods. But yeah, these are my Digos. They're still here, fortunately. <laughs> I love these little guys. They're really energetic and uh, they do a lot. Their cage is a little bit messy right now because I put in these little tubes and they've been destroying them so everything is full of plush. But, you know, that's just how these guys are. I don't know where Ava is. I think she's in the... Oh yeah, there she is. Hi, Ava. She really hates me. Uh, Lucy's eating. So those are the Digus. Um, I'm preparing to make an outside cage for them. I already have one, but it's really small. Uh, these guys don't really need to be outside. They're from Chile. They like it warm. But uh, I have created a little mini farm for kids in my backyard. Um, oh, there's Ava. And uh, I have a cage where these Digus are in for like three hours every week just for me to show them to little kids that come to my backyard and are here to pet all my animals and learn about them which is something I uh, do right now and I really like to do it uh, obviously I've bought a giant cupboard and I'm planning on making it into a fun outside enclosure just to showcase these guys because obviously when it gets colder um, these guys need to be inside because they really don't like the cold. Oh, there's Ava. She's really fast. Hi, girl! She's like, Le just just leave me alone. <laughs> okay, um, I've blabbled enough. Let's go to the next one. Well, hi, Vince. Hi, Vince. This is Vince, my bearded dragon, also still here. Uh, he's really cute and fun and really, really calm. Uh, I've decided not to let him hibernate this time because... I'm always scared shitless when he does that. Uh, when the when it gets colder, bearded dragons tend to hibernate, and they're in a state of almost death where they like breathe only once in a couple of minutes, and their body's really cold. And I hate seeing him like that, even though it's kind of a natural thing. And uh, some people say it's healthy for them to hibernate; others say it's unhealthy. I've done it a couple of years because I wanted him to live a most natural life as possible. Um, again, if, if there are a lot of reasons why it's healthy and unhealthy, I just did it because I thought it would be a natural way. But now I'm probably gonna not do it. Uh, if, if anyone says like, no, don't, don't stop doing it because he's used to it or something, please tell me. But I've seen people who stop doing it. He's like... Um, six years or something right now which is not that old uh bearded dragons usually get like 10 to 15 years but still i really don't want to risk it uh so i'm gonna keep his lamp on still the temperature is cooler around here so he's a little bit slower maybe it's because like he's used to it that this time of year it gets colder but he's still doing okay right buddy i love reptiles and i love bearded dragons they are quite simple to keep, um, especially regarding other types of reptiles. And they're actually, I think they're one of the most popular reptiles uh, that people keep. But let me just get in. let me just get in there. Hi, Vince. They're really derpy as well, which I love. I love animals who are derpy. 
which is why I got my silkies. But yeah. Hi, Vince. Bye, Vince. Hi, this is Hagrid. Um, this tank is not his tank. It's way too small for him. But this is just temporary. We we got a huge tank, which is actually from the owners that had him before. Um, we got him to put him in the little pond in our backyard. Now, when they're in the pond in the winter, they are going to hibernate. And they dig themselves in or, like, sleep at the bottom of the... Um, at the bottom of the pond when it's deep enough. Our pond is 150 liters, which is not, I don't think it's deep enough. And also I want to make sure that he lives through um, the spring. So uh, I wanted to keep him, this water is, um, it's being warmed up just a little tiny bit. So to just to make sure that he doesn't hibernate. Now this is a small aquarium. This is for, this is a turtle aquarium, but it's for, Tiny turtles, uh, actually it's for muscus turtles, which we used to keep. Unfortunately, one of our muscus tur uh, like our <laughs> only muscus turtle we had, he died. Uh, we don't know why, he just suddenly died. Um, yeah, this is Hagrid, and he is going to move into a giant aquarium very, very soon. He's probably going to be situated in our living room, because we cannot get it up the stairs, but there he is. He's an amazing turtle. He's a yellow belly or yellow cheeked um, slider turtle. And he's really lovely and really docile. So yeah, that's Hagrid. Obviously, I wanted to talk about this one. This is an empty terrarium and we bought this for our previous pet chameleon, um, Ida. She had uh, extreme calcium deficiency, which is apparently very common with uh, Yemen chameleons when they're young because they put a lot of their calcium into growing because they go from like being one or two centimeters to 30 in a year uh, so they usually put a lot of calcium into that which means they get calcium deficiency really quickly and the only thing to help that uh, to prevent that from happening is giving them calcium supplements from the beginning which we didn't do until later which was a big mistake but uh, I saw something was wrong immediately, I went to the vet immediately, like a um, reptile specialist, and he uh, gave her a lot of medication, we gave her a lot of medication, we um, tried everything. Unfortunately, the um, calcium deficiency was too severe and she ended up passing away. And I was really sad because she was an amazing chameleon, she loved climbing on me, uh, and it's really... I was really sad when she passed away. I was on vacation too. So yeah, but we ended up getting a new chameleon, which I'm going to show in a bit. Uh, but this is the terrarium Ida was in for a couple of months or no, for a month or something. I don't know, uh, because her bones were so fragile that if she fell, she'd break all of them. So we, we bought a terrarium that wasn't very tall because chameleons love climbing. So they kind of need a really tall uh, terrarium. But this one's empty right now. And I kind of am in the market for buying a smaller um, reptile or amphibian. I'm thinking about getting a toad or frog. Because ever since I was like three years old, I've always, always loved toads and frogs and salamanders. Now, unfortunately, you cannot catch them in the wild and then... Um, own them which makes sense but it's literally illegal and even though it wasn't illegal I probably wouldn't do it because taking an animal from its natural habitat uh, habitat and then um, letting it live in captivity it can bring a lot of complications but yeah I'm looking for maybe a frog or a toad to live here now um, of course I need to do my research I need to look at what specific type I would like I have a few in mind, um, but uh, unfortunately, the range of frogs you can buy in Belgium, or at least near me, is not that high. Like, you can buy poison dart frogs, and I've seen a giant toad or a cane toad. I really like the cane toad because it's really derpy, but they can grow to um, 15 and sometimes even 25 centimeters and this cage is obviously too small for that 
uh, even though I don't think they need a lot of space. So maybe if I do a little more research, I can maybe keep it in here, but I'm going to do a lot of research and see what fits perfectly for this one. Or I might just keep it empty. We'll see. This is the terrarium of our new human chameleon, Julia. Um, you can, if you can see her, uh, no, me neither, but I know where she is because she's always somewhere in here. Oh, yeah, there she is. I'm going to take her out. Oh, she's a little bit angry. Hi there. It's okay. I tried to handle her as often as... Yeah, that's her defense move, just opening her mouth and puffing up. There she goes. It's okay, Julia. She is really lively, like really, like 10 times more lively than Ida was. Yeah, it's okay. Oh, she's really scared of the phone. It's fine. I try to handle her a lot so she gets used to it, but chameleons like to be on their own. They're really sensitive to stress. She is um, strike, trying to strike the camera. It's okay. She's really scared of the phone. I'm going to back her up a little bit. Yeah, she, the, the little dots she's putting off her colors is also her defense move. The little dots kind of give an illusion that she's bigger while she's puffing up. But she's really lovely. I do really miss Ida, though. But uh, her name is Julia, which is the female version of the name of our vet that really tried his best to save um, Ida. So that's kind of a little tribute. I love chameleons. I love Yemen chameleons. She's really uneasy right now, as you can see, so I might just try and get her back onto her branch, which, yeah, she'd feel a lot more comfortable. She's probably gonna hide. She's t <laughs> she's so angry. It's okay, girl. But yeah, these chameleons are awesome. Uh, I really like chameleons, which is all pretty much all I have to say. I'm just gonna spray a little bit because I feel like it's not human enough. Hold on. Let me just just spray it a little bit which I do I do this about twice a day and I really keep an eye on the dial there to see if it's humid enough uh, to make sure it's all in the green she really doesn't like the rain but she drinks from the wet plants so that's also especially important uh, why I spray her a lot I mean her environment of course there you go. I'm really happy to have a, 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 another chameleon or have a chameleon again. They're awesome pets, but they're really difficult to keep uh, because they need the right humidity, they need the right supplements, they need the right food. Everything in her environment needs to be perfect for her to thrive. Look, she's still angry. Okay, I'm gonna leave you alone, okay? I'm not gonna bother you anymore. You've suffered enough from me trying to show you and handle you. It's fine. So this is my special ferret tent, uh, which is used to keep the ferrets dry. There they are. Come here, little girls. Come here. Oh, ferrets are awesome. They're so cute. Um, I've built this little environment for them to play in, which they are in when it's relatively dry. Um, ferrets get a winter coat, so they can stand the cold pretty okay. Uh, but when they are used to being inside, obviously it's going to be a little problematic when you put them suddenly out in the winter. But these guys are, are outside a while and they can handle the cold better than heat. So that they are um, only in here when the weather is safe, meaning that it's they can like the, they're, they can be in the rain because of the tent. But when it storms or when there's like a snowstorm or something, I usually put them inside just to make sure that they're safe. But uh, right now, the weather for them is actually perfect, so they like to play around. <laughs> Come here. Their nails, nails are a little long, even though I just cut them. I mean, I just cut them like... You need to do it every two weeks, and I think it's like been three weeks, so I have to cut them. Uh, but yeah. Oh my god, why are you always on the door? Come here. Come here. Come here, come here, come here, come here. You guys are so cute, yes. You guys are so cute. Yeah, I love these little girls. Come here. I say guys, but you know, as a general neutral term. Come on, get back there. Aha. There you go. This is Nora, I believe. They look almost identical, so... I need to be careful she doesn't fall. Hi there. 
Hi there. Hold on, let me get you back. I'm just gonna give like a nicer look to their entire environment. Here's a little pond they get uh, to refresh themselves, to drink. Uh, their food is served in that bowl over there, which there's still some in it. And then I'll, it's all just playful uh, items. I try to recreate their natural environment in air quotes because, you know, most of the things, plants are fake. The logs aren't though, but yeah, this is the, this is the ferret enclosure. Okay, so these guys are new. Oh, there they are. I doubt they'll kind of show themselves because they're young and they're still pretty uh, scared. But there is, let me see, this is Vita, which she's really fast, so that's kind of, yeah, there she goes. Uh, and then Pippa is back there. If you can see her. Oh, there she goes. She's inside. Yeah, they're still pretty scared of me. I try to spend some time with them, but when they're um, when I grab them, they're really calm. But when they're in here, they're kind of springy, which is quite typical for guinea pigs. These are guinea pigs, by the way, if you couldn't tell, but it's pretty obvious. So this is their... Uh, ear. There's them all. But yeah, when, when you grab them and pet them, they're really calm, but when they're in their own environment and you kind of just come in they're kind of panicky oh there's a light hi vita but they're really cute and i try to make a nice enclosure for them so yeah these are the guinea pigs i don't think i really need to give uh, a lot of explanation i'm pretty sure you know what they're all about but they're really cute chickens there they come chickens come here come here they usually come when i call because I always come here with food, so they know there's food. They're a little bit... the weather is really wet, so they kind of look wet. Uh, hi chickens! These, this, these are uh, my chickens. Um, this is Mathilda, uh, or Mathilde is actually her name, but uh, she is a... I know her name in Dutch, I don't know what it, what it is in English, but uh, I'll try to look it up another time, but she's a really nice chicken. And then you have my Dutch Crested and my Silkies. This is the Dutch uh, Crested or Dutch White Crest Chicken. And those are the Silkies. I have three Silkies and then one Dutch Crested Chicken and then one of those, which I still don't know the name in English. The rabbits are locked up because they burrowed a hole. Uh, and we yet need to fix it completely. The hole is closed, but they'll just burrow themselves out of there. So they're kind of locked up for a few days. We have a couple of new rabbits. Um, this is Wizzy. She's new. Uh, and all three of these rabbits come from the same home, which was an older guy who moved to an apartment and he couldn't take them with him. So we kind of brought in these little guys. This is Toby. This is Funkel. And this is Wizzy. Uh, Wizzy is very cute. I know her, her like... Um, I know what, what the breed is in Dutch, I really, I don't know what it is in English, but she's one of those two. And he's really fat. <laughs> they got kind of a very sugarful diet and they didn't have, have a lot of free roam. Uh, you can hear the goats. Uh, <laughs> so the, he's pretty fat. Uh, also they have paper uh, pressed. Oh jeez, you kind of nipped at my hand there. Uh, they have paper bedding because Funkel is allergic to the the straw one we give. So, and these guys are locked up too. But somehow, her sister got loose and she's somewhere in the yard. But that's fine. So, where is Claire? Ah, there is Claire. She's laying an egg. I'll let you just just do your thing. But yeah, I really love these chickens. Don't you what happened to your hair? The rain happened. This is our turtle pond. It's kind of overgrown. Uh, <laughs> there's no turtles in here right now, but we'll, when the spring comes, we'll kind of clean this up and put new water in the pond and then put the turtles in. So this is my little board I have for the turtles. This is Hagrid and then this is Harry. Harry unfortunately passed away. But yeah, this is Hagrid's habitat, but we are kind of thinking about getting a new muskus turtle, which is this type of turtle, by the way. So, this is a turtle enclosure. Pigeons! There they are. We ha currently have seven pigeons, uh, but we might get them to breed again in the spring, 
They breed all the time. Every About every nine days they lay an egg. We take it away because we don't want everything to be full of pigeons. Uh, well, there is not a lot of pigeons, which is surprising because of the rain. Like, I don't know if Rock or Owen are home. No, they're not. That's weird. They're usually home. Uh, yeah, these are free roam pigeons again, so they can uh, get out of there and just pretty much go whenever they want to. But these guys are lazy, so that's uh, a couple and those are their children. Oh, and there they go. Now they're all gone. Great. <laughs> Hi, Pauline. Let me just get in there. Hi there. These are our mini dwarf goats. Or just dwarf goats. I just add the mini to emphasize the the tininess of them. These are both adults. This is uh, Pauline and this is Svera. And they are really huggable. Uh, they're really tame because I spend a lot of time with them. So they really like to be hugged and cradled and, and petted. Right? Right, Pauline? Oh my god, she's so adorable. You're also adorable, Svera. You're also adorable. I need to pour this this back into the hay rack because they are really messy so when i pour this in there's gonna be like it's gonna be back in there or they just eat it out of that but i don't give them new hay until that is empty because that's all good hay it just fell out but you guys are really picky huh yes i also gave them these which they before they really liked but now i guess they're kind of the leaves aren't as green anymore I mean, they are, but they're like, really, the texture is not as soft. And now they don't want to eat them. You guys are silly goats. Yes. But, yeah, these are really cuddleable, which is great. Yeah, what is it, Sveta? What is it? Yes. <laughs> Look at him go. Oh, he loves that. Ride between the horns. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, I did this again because I'm bored. And it's literally the same, just with a few more animals. But these are all my animals. I also have a dog that he's sleeping inside. And I'm not going to wake him up because he's grumpy. And we also have a horse. But she's not here. So <laughs> just to know that we also have those. And I hope I might find a nice contestant to fill my empty terrarium in the future. Or I might just keep it empty. But you know I have it and I like reptiles. So we'll see. 